we, I was on the subway, we were just hanging out together, and all of a sudden, this guy starts saying all these slurs at us. He's trying to get us to throw a punch. My guest today is Sarah Haskell, also known as That Relatable Jew, an Orthodox Jewish content creator and artist with over 200,000 followers across TikTok and Instagram, whose educational online videos look at Jewish positivity, kosher food, Jewish holidays and modest fashion. Sarah has used her platform and influence to not only teach her followers about the beauty in Judaism, but she has also encouraged them to stand up to anti-Semitism, never shying away from talking about her own experiences. Thank you so much for having me. I really love your podcast and I feel grateful to be a part of it. Now, much of your content explores your own personal journey with Judaism and how far along you've come with it. What has that looked like previously? And what does it look like now? Um, I would say in the past, growing up, you know, in my Orthodox Jewish community, a lot of the times I would go through things blindly and not really knowing why I was doing it and then just doing it. And I think in the past, you know, I felt a lot of resentment because, you know, as beautiful as Orthodoxy is, it can feel very hard to do if you don't have that passion behind it and like these deep reasons as to why you're doing it. So in the past, I would say, you know, it felt heavier for me. And now what it looks like is I take the time to look into the meaning behind why I'm doing something. I'll put in that research and then I will teach to my followers what I learned for myself as well. And I take them along that journey. And I think that when you hit your teenage years, especially, you kind of start questioning why you're doing things. Are you doing it blindly or are you doing it because that's something you truly want to do? And I would say at this point now, everything that I do, having religion in my life, it's not forced on me. It's not something I go through blindly anymore. It's intentional and it's beautiful and I know a lot more of the reasons now as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I'm making that intentional choice to be that way. You've just spoken uh, quite a bit about your, your journey and you make a lot of videos about it. And I'm wondering what have the responses to your videos been, um, both positive and negative? I would say a lot of positivity overall, which I'm very grateful for. That, you know, a lot of the times I think we were always showing the perfect sides of Judaism all the time. And I think people like to see just a down to earth point of view from a regular person of like, realistically, like, it's hard sometimes. And it's also very, very beautiful, too. And so I think in that way, people like message me a lot saying they feel less alone in their struggles now. And because I'm making it more normal to openly discuss these struggles as a community that, you know, it doesn't have to be an isolating experience. Um, the negative side, I would say, is just mostly anti-Semitic comments for the most part. It usually doesn't come from Jewish people. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, what, what do those anti-Semitic comments look like? Um, honestly... Every time I see these comments, it shocks me because we're in 2023. So you would think that anti-Semitism like this doesn't exist anymore, but it very, very much does, unfortunately. Um, I get comments about the Holocaust. Um, I'll get comments about the... Israel Palestine conflict on a post that has absolutely nothing to do with politics whatsoever. It's just because I'm openly Jewish that they somehow feel like I am the spokesperson for all Jewish people um, when I rarely talk about politics on my page. And 
people, you know, trying to make fun of my appearance, like a Jewish nose or saying I don't look Jewish enough because I was born with blonde hair. <laughs> um, you know, having all these stereotypes. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of it is Holocaust comments still. Well, first of all, I'm very sorry that you that you uh, have to go through that. I mean, what do you uh, do to, to deal with it when you see this? Um, do you sort of have to, you know, reset at all? Or how does it affect you? Well, I try to put as many filters on my comment section as I can. So, you know, because if I'm posting a video about Judaism, I want the comments to be a nice back and forth between everyone to feel like they have a community. I don't want anti-Semitic people to take over that, you know, that entire conversation of what could have been. So I do my best to filter it out. However, the thing with filters is that while the public may not see these comments, I'm seeing them and I have to go through them one by one, approving or declining each one to see if the public can see it or not. So while people that might be scrolling on my page won't see these anti-Semitic comments every day, I have to go through that approval section of all the filtered comments that I'm seeing and read through them. And now, honestly, I don't even read through to accept or decline because, you know, it's hard sometimes to do that. Um, if you don't mind me asking, have you found that this has impacted your mental health at all? I would say every once in a while, I'll see a comment that still shocks me, even though I'm exposed to this almost every single day. Um, however, it just pushes me, honestly, to keep doing what I'm doing. Because if I was so heavily affected by every single comment that I was getting, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. Like, if I truly let, let every single comment get to me I just kind of brush it off and I keep going along and because what they're trying to do is silence Jewish voices so by me stopping that's letting those commenters win so I'm just very proud to be Jewish online and will continue to be that positive representation I hope so because your your whole uh, online uh, presence is is very uh, positive and it's not really about like uh it's nothing political it's no like really like hot takes or anything so the fact that would people you know would come to you where for the most part you're saying hey here's a day in the life and here's my shabbat rituals or or whatever it may be it's it's, it's even a little bit more insidious because there is absolutely nothing uh, that they should find objectionable. So to go to you about Israel or the Holocaust is just pure, pure anti-Semitism as far as I see it. I was watching, you know, some of your videos. You mentioned in a recent video that you experienced an anti-Semitic incident on the subway in New York. And the video had the caption, managing a full-time job, and preparing for Shabbat, a very normal day in the life uh, topic. And this sort of gave me the impression that anti-Semitism might be a fairly everyday experience for identifiable Jews such as yourself, by which I mean Jewish people who might be uh, readily viewed as Jewish from the way they dress or the accessories they wear, for example, the Star of David or certain clothing. Um, we've spoken a bit about online anti-Semitism. Would you talk a bit about some of the in-person anti-Semitism that you may have faced? For the most part, I would say I don't face so much in-person anti-Semitism because my features blend in more, I guess, with the average person. However, the one time where it was very identifiable because I was with a group of my Jewish friends and, you know, we looked very outwardly Jewish. Um, we, I was on the subway, we were just hanging out together. And all of a sudden, this guy starts saying all these slurs at us. He's trying to get us to throw a punch. And you know, I knew that what he was trying to do was he was trying to rile us up with so many anti-Semitic comments that we would throw the punch. And then he would say, Oh, look, 
see, these are what Jewish people are like. So my strategy right away in that moment was the second the subway stopped at a train stop, I said, we're going to, I signaled to all my friends. I looked them in the eyes and I pointed to the car door and we quickly exited the train car and then just sat in the one behind it. Because why should I miss my train of where I'm trying to go? So in that quick moment, I just quickly, we ran and we went into a different train car. And I think with anti-Semitism, sometimes it's best to remove yourself. The only time where I really do confront anti-Semitism head on is if I think that there's going to be an education opportunity where they might have truly been misinformed and they just need to be educated versus someone that is pure hate and trying to rile you up to start a fight for absolutely no reason. So I think that's important. You know, you were a little bit asking me before how I handle it. Most of the time I do ignore the comments, but if I do see an educational opportunity, I will confront them. So, so that's quite interesting. Let's go into that. How, how do you um, sort of discern the ones that are a bit on the line? Because obviously, if there's a guy yelling anti-Semitic slurs on the subway, okay, that's quite a clear-cut case. But if there's someone in the comments section, for example, and they might seem a little bit ignorant, but they may also seem that this could be doing this intentionally, um, how do you kind of like figure that out? Do you trust, trust your gut? Um, I would say, unfortunately, I've dealt with so much anti-Semitism that, like, I usually could read how the person is. Obviously, I'm not correct every single time. So there are times where I do try to educate. And, you know, I say this video has absolutely nothing to do about politics. By you bringing up politics on this video, you are being anti-Semitic because I did not mention anything about that. And you're just telling me this purely because I'm Jewish. And sometimes they'll say, you know, sometimes they'll think about what they they've done. Sometimes they won't reply anything. Maybe they're processing. And other times they respond with even more anti-Semitic comments. And then I have to block them. I can't block each person. It's too many because, like, unfortunately, I get like thousands of anti-Semitic comments. If I was blocking, I'd be doing that all day. But. Um, case by case, if things do get out of hand, I do start to block people. Yeah. Um, you know, it, w- what advice would you give to to Jews who are thinking about becoming content creators? Uh, both general advice, but also in regard to anti-Semitism. I would say you really have to think about it before you do it. Being online is fantastic. I love representing the Jewish people. I love being a positive representation and, you know, showing Jewish life, but you have to have a certain mental toughness because you will face anti-Semitism. Unfortunately, you just will, especially if you're being openly Jewish online. And my advice is if you're gonna do it be prepared be mentally ready and have a game plan of how you will handle those situations when they come up so that it doesn't mentally affect you as hard for me putting the filters on my comments greatly helped my mental health Mm, good um would you say you were mentally ready the first couple of times it happened or or were you maybe taken off guard? I was definitely taken off guard when I first started this. I did not know how to handle it at all. I reached out to many other Jewish influencers and, you know, through the way they handled it, I learned how to handle it. And if I saw how I, and I, you know, and if I saw that, maybe other people weren't handling it in the best way. I also learned from that how to do better. Mm. Sure. I mean, that's kind of, just what you said right there. That kind of sounds like within the Jewish influence uh, activist sphere, if you like, there's some sort of a support network. Is that fair to say? Yes. We have group chats. Um, I met up in person sometimes with other Jewish influencers it's very nice to feel like 
you know, if I have a question about that, that I have um, almost like this Jewish influencer support group, because unfortunately, we all get these comments. All of us are facing anti-Semitism online. I mean, the more followers you get, the higher the anti-Semitism goes up. And, you know, right. you kind of have to think, is this something I want to get into? And to me, it's still yes. Yeah. That's the, why, why is it still yes? Why is it still worth it for you? Because at the end of the day, if I'm inspiring Jewish people to be proud of their culture and proud of their heritage, then that's what's worth it for me. By focusing on the end goal of what I'm trying to accomplish and not focusing on the hate as my main, you know, focus. Right, right. And and what is that end goal? Do you have a particular vision for where you want uh, that relatable Jew to go in however many years? Yes, I mean, I hope to continue showing my Jewish life, um, the future stages of what that looks like, maybe that relatable Jew when I get married one day or when I have kids one day, here's what my Jewish kids look like. <laughs> that yeah. could be an expansion of that. Um, I also hope to do more long format videos in the future, you know, doing more of a deep dive into my stories because right now most of them end at a minute, but I think that I'd like to do longer story times in the future. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, now, I want to I wanna talk about some of the other things you do, because you do quite a bit. Uh, in addition to creating online videos, you, you're also an artist. And in May of last year, you graduated from the Fashion Institute of Technology in Manhattan, also known as FIT. Uh, and you have also created artwork that was displayed at FIT's museum. That's very cool. Uh, how did you become interested in fashion and art? Thank you. Um, I would say since I was a little kid, I've just always loved um, doing art and connecting through that as my passion. It just felt natural. And it was very cool to, you know, be that Jewish representation in my college as well. I did a lot of Jewish art. Actually, in my senior art show, when it was featured in the museum, I won third place in the gallery show. And it was the piece that, thank you, and the piece that won was actually my Jewish piece of work that featured my Zadi, my grandfather, blowing the shofar with all these Hebrew prayers coming out of it. And, you know, I was nervous when I was drawing that one because I'm like, what is my class? gonna think of this piece of work nobody is jewish but me in this room so i took a risk and i guess because it was so different and in a good way that it stood out from the others it yeah i mean it clearly did i've seen that painting it's, it's on your website sarahhaskellart.com it's really beautiful and a lot of your art is incredibly uh, colorful and bold and it includes themes of nature, relationships, and of course, uh, Judaism. I'd be very interested to hear, how has your uh, Judaism meshed with your, with your artwork? It definitely didn't at the beginning, I will say that. I did not always used to do Jewish art. And then I found that when I was doing so much Jewish blogging and talking online, and making all these videos showing my Jewish life, that kind of slowly started influencing my art in a subconscious way because I was putting so much time and energy into that that I started thinking, hey, maybe I should do some artwork about, you know, my Jewish culture as well. And that's kind of how that snowballed into all that happening in my senior year of college. Yeah, that's absolutely awesome. And and when you're creating a piece, uh, what is the process that, that goes into that? I would say at first, you know, I start with what do I want to show to the world? It's actually very similar to me doing a video, similar creative process. Interesting. Of, you know, what am I trying to show? What is the message I want to convey? 
how can I best visualize this? And with a video, how can I best say this to the world? And then from there, you know, after a few tries of maybe getting it wrong, the creative stage where you're trying to figure out what it's going to look like. And then, um, and then once it's all set, I just kind of go for it to the finish line until I'm done. That's, that's really, uh, that's really, really cool. And do you have any particular favorite, uh, uh, subjects to, 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 um, paint and stuff? Um, I would say usually it's different every time. It's really what I'm feeling inspired by at that point in my life. I did recently, um, release a Jew, my Jewish merchandise. I did my hoodies where I did a big Jewish star with you know, all these symbols on it. That was a really cool project for me because I felt like I was merging my identity as an artist with what I do online as, um, you know, like a Jewish influencer showing my life. So that was very cool to combine both of those worlds together. Yeah, I've seen that sweater. It's pretty awesome. Uh, as you say, there are Jewish symbols. You've got the Chale, you've got the Hanukkah, and it all comes together to make a giant mug and dove, a giant star of David. Uh, in the description online next to the sweater, you write, with the rise of anti-Semitism, we need to feel closer to our Jewish heritage now more than ever. Wear the star of David sweatshirt to show your support to the Jewish community and wear it loud and proud. Um, I thought this was really interesting, so I'm not sure that I've seen in that many places anti-Semitism influence uh, clothing design in a positive way. Um, I be, what was the how how does anti-Semitism connect to the to the sweatshirt? Well, because during that time, I felt like a lot of people, you know, were scared. It was around the time with the whole Kanye. Um, mm. you know, anti-Semitic comments, which led to a spike of more anti-Semitism on my page than usual. And I just wanted a fun way for Jews to feel like they could be proud of their culture, they could be proud of their heritage, and show it off in a beautiful way. And I think a lot of the times when anti-Semitism spikes, we feel like we have to shrink ourselves. And I wanted to say, no, let's be proud of who we are. Let's show it off in a beautiful way. You know, we don't have to fight hate with hate. We can choose to transform this into a community building experience where we could all feel even more connected to each other. And obviously, you know, after speaking with some of my followers, I realized that some people might be scared to wear a Jewish star openly. And, you know, and I understand that for me, I just have the type of personality usually where I will be like, no, I'm going to keep being openly Jewish no matter what. And, but I understand that some people are very scared for their safety and not everyone has the privilege to look so, you know, openly Jewish all the time, which is why I think I will do even more designs where maybe the Jewish symbols are still there, but a little bit more discreet and hidden in the future so that I could kind of cater to those Jews that might, you know, not live in as safe of a place as I do. That's, that's pretty cool. I have to say, um, can, can you give us any sort of a sneak peek, any sort of a hint as to what you might be going for? Um, well, I don't want to give too much away. No, of course. Not but, too much. <laughs> but I think, I think I'll still do a bunch of different, like maybe Jewish foods or, you know, Jewish holiday symbols and just not make it form a huge Jewish star on the sweatshirt. Because I, the, the point isn't to be like, let's hide being Jewish. You're still being Jewish and you're still being proud by wearing, you know, the merch. You're just doing it in a, you know, a little bit more of a not as straightforward way. I like it. I think there's a gap in the market for, for, clothes with jewish foods on them i hope to close that gap soon <laughs> <laughs> now um as as mentioned you're you're quite into uh fashion a lot of your videos are about fashion um now i think there's somewhat of a uh perception among some people that dressing modest and looking cool 
might be at odds with each other, but that couldn't be further from the truth, as you have shown. Uh, do you have any fashion tips for Orthodox Jewish women who may want to dress modestly while still looking stylish? Yeah, I would say that, you know, there are so many resources out there now to look modest and fashionable. There's a whole growing community of Orthodox Jewish women that dedicate their entire feed to putting together trendy, modest outfits and making it look beautiful. And they're keeping up with all the same trends as everyone else, but they take the fabrics and they just style it in a modest way. I touch upon modesty, but that's not my like specialty. Some people now will dedicate themselves to just solely focusing on this one topic. So my advice would be follow these Jewish influencers that are out there. They're dedicating their entire page to modest or sneeze fashion. And because they are powerhouses. For me, I just, you know, here and there, I'll try to pick out trendy pieces that I'll see maybe at Zara, H&M. A lot of the times you could go into regular stores and you just have to pick through the clothes a little bit longer. But if you want real fashion advice, I would go to them. So uh, I I now want to ask you a question that I ask uh, all of our guests, which is if someone who is not Jewish comes to you and says that they want to help in the fight against anti-Semitism, where should they start? I would say start by supporting your friends, checking in with them, making sure that they're doing okay if they're facing anti-Semitism as well, and going to your local you know, Jewish resources and asking them how you can help or maybe volunteer your time and just checking in on them and making sure everything's okay that that would be my greatest advice and just educating yourself as well that you know if there's maybe a jewish holiday you want to know more about if you want to break down maybe a misconception that you might have been taught just doing your research and being there to support your jewish friends Mm, i like it and if i may uh uh, you know, give a little resource to people, please go to our website, antisemitism.org to learn more about the topic. Now, uh, Sarah, before we before we go, please tell the listeners, uh, what have you got going on? What have you got coming up? And where can people find you? Well, I always have a lot of videos coming out where I'll talk about my day to day Jewish life. Um, and I'm always posting on instagram and tiktok and facebook so find me at that relatable jew that's my username across everything and you know i can't wait to update you guys and show you more of my life amazing that's that's great uh sarah thank you so so much for coming on podcast against anti-semitism of course thank you for having me it was so great talking with you